Hey everyone, in this video, you will finally understand what this keyword in JavaScript actually refers to in all of the different contexts. The keyword this is the source of a lot of confusion for people learning JavaScript. So in this video, I wanna give you a brief introduction without overwhelming you with a ton of technical jargon. When trying to figure out what the keyword this is referring to, the question you really need to ask yourself is what is the object executing the current function? A very general rule of thumb is just to look at the object on the left of the dot. Most of the time, that's what the keyword this is referring to. There are several exceptions though, and we're gonna go over them in a minute. If we were to reference this object outside of a function, this would refer to the window object in JavaScript or the global object in Node. So if I did something like console log this object and I'm outside of a function in the global scope, uh, this would equal the window object. By the way, it's fairly uncommon for us to reference the keyword this within the global context. You'd probably just do window dot something. Typically, when we reference the keyword this, it's done within the context of a function. Now let's take a look at what the keyword this refers to when we reference it within a function. And the easiest way to do that is by looking at how the function is being invoked. In JavaScript, there are four different ways we can invoke a function. There is the regular function invocation, a function that doesn't belong on an object, method invocation, so a method that belongs to an object. There is a constructor invocation where we can create new objects, and there's also indirect invocation, which is using dot bind, dot apply, dot call to explicitly bind functions to objects. It is how is the function being called? So let's take a look at the most basic example, a function invocation. So a function that doesn't belong on an object. Here I have just a regular function in the global scope. So if we save this, we can see that this is the window object. So anytime you reference this within the context of a function that doesn't belong on an object, um, this will reference the window object in a browser. One exception to this rule is that if you're using strict mode, as I am here, this in a function will be undefined. So it won't be the global object, it'll be undefined. Now let's take a look at what happens when you call a method that belongs on an object. If we are referencing the keyword this within a method that belongs to an object, the keyword this will reference the object that the method belongs to. So let's take a look at this example. Here I've created an object called cafe, and inside the object cafe, I have a method that belongs to the object called print name. And inside print, print name, I'm going to reference this, right? So I'm gonna call this dot cafe name, and I'm gonna invoke that method. So what do you think is gonna happen? Is it gonna be undefined, or is it going to reference its cafe name? Let's save it and run it. And you can see that it works as expected. It's referencing the object that the method belongs to. Also, you can even add a method after the object is created, and this will still correctly reference the original object. So if I save this, if I've, I've got to invoke it, JavaScript, of course, wouldn't be JavaScript if there wasn't a bunch of weird gotchas and odd behaviors that we have to watch out for. What if we create a new variable and assign it the value of an object's method? So here I've created the variable say hi, and I have assigned it to cafe.printName, which is the method on the cafe object. So if I call say hi, what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to reference the cafe object correctly? Let's try it. So if I save that, so we get undefined. What have we learned here? We've learned that if you extract a method from an object and assign it to a variable and invoke that function, this is considered a function invocation, not a method invocation. And remember I mentioned earlier that if it's a function invocation, the keyword this will reference the global object. Now let's take a look at our third example, which is a constructor function. So just as a brief review, uh, basically what a constructor function allows us to do is to create a new instance of an object based on a blueprint. So if you're not super familiar with constructor functions, make sure to watch a couple tutorials on object-oriented JavaScript. When we call a constructor function in JavaScript, as I'm doing here, what the JavaScript engine does is it creates a new empty object and assigns the value of this to that new instance of the object. So for example, if we did something like 
you can see that when we log this, this refers to that dog object. The fourth and final way we can call methods is by using indirect invocation. So by using methods such as dot call, apply, and bind. Using call, apply, and bind, we can explicitly bind an object to a function. So you can see in my example here, I've got an rabbit object and a concatename function that references the keyword this. To bind concatename to rabbit, all we have to do is call dot call on the function and pass in the object that we want to attach the function to. So the first argument here is going to be what the keyword this will reference. So just to reiterate, in indirect invocations, it's the first argument that's passed in to call, apply, or bind that the keyword this will refer to. Another gotcha that we really need to watch out for is callback functions. Here, we're going back to our cafe object. I've created a property that's an array of all the drinks that are available, and then also a print menu, which is a property on this object that's also a function. And what this one, this function does, it's, it's going to loop through all the coffee types that belongs to the object, and it prints the name of the drink as well as the name of the cafe. So what we're expecting here is a list of all the drinks alongside the name of the cafe, which is JJ Bean. So what happens when we actually call this, uh, let's see, print menu. We get the name of the drink, but when we call the name of the cafe, we get undefined. Why is that? In fact, if we console log this object inside of this callback function, we see that it's actually the window object. So it's not the cafe object. So why is this the case? By the way, it's a question that is asked pretty often in job interviews. The reason is the function here, it's not a direct property of the object. So it's not an object method. It's simply a function that is passed in as a callback function inside of a method that belongs to the object. It doesn't belong directly on the object. Therefore, this function here, it's a function invocation. It creates its own execution context. And remember what I said about function invocations. If it's a regular function invocation, then the keyword this refers to the global object. This is a pretty well known and common problem. And there's a couple ways we can solve it. For example, what we can do is declare a variable, say self, and have it point to this object because in here, the keyword this still points to the cafe object. It's only from here to here, the keyword this points to the, to the global object. So here we're still in the context where the keyword this references the cafe object. So we can assign a variable to this keyword and we can do something like self dot cafe name and this should work. One other way that we could have resolved the scoping issue is by explicitly binding the object of this with the callback function. So if we did something like dot bind and then you pass in this object, because remember, it's only within the callback function that the keyword this references the global object. Outside of what I'm highlighting, we're still within the context of the cafe object and the keyword this will reference the cafe object. So binding this will work. If we save it, there we go. Now there's another way we can actually fix the scoping issue in this example, but that's using arrow functions and it's a whole big topic that I don't have time to cover in this video, but it's gonna be covered in the video I link to right after this one. So keep watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.